all right dear students we are going to start the chapter solution as i told you earlier there are certain portions of this chapter which are already done in class 11 so i'm just giving you a kind of revision so you notice here uh, the definition of solution <clears throat> a solution a homogeneous mixture of two or more components is called a solution so what is the criteria for a solution to be homogeneous it has to be homogeneous and it there may it has to be at least two components or it may be more and one more thing you have to remember that the components of the solution do not undergo any chemical reaction and they can be separated by ordinary physical methods by ordinary physical methods we mean sedimentation distillation filtration all those now if we have only two components only two components in a solution then we call it a binary solution out of which the component which is present in lesser quantity is called solute and the one which is present in the larger quantity we call it solvent and the two form some homogeneous mixture make a solution now by convention solute is designated the symbol b or 2 as you can see here it's written and solvent since it is present in a larger quantity it has a more priority and that's why it is given first preference A or 1. Then we have done a few concentration terms earlier also. This is mass percentage, mole fraction, molarity and molality. Mass percentage of solute is mass of solute divided by mass of solution into 100 mole fraction for each component in the solution we can calculate and if we consider the solution is made up of two components a and b then chi a is written as number of moles of a divided by total number of moles of a and b like this and since it is the ratio of number of moles it has no unit now if you know chi b sorry chi a then chi b will be exactly similar n b divided by n a plus n a now if you add the two the total comes to one as you know sum of the fractions is always one so if i know chi a i can easily calculate chi b or if i know chi b i can easily calculate chi a by using this formula then comes molarity it is the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution. So molarity is equal to number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution but make sure the unit of volume has to be liters. If we replace the symbols here we can see NB stands for number of moles of solute and V is the symbol for volume of solution in liter. You may notice in V we have not put any A or B because if I write VA it will stand for volume of solvent if I write VB then it will stand for volume of solute but we have only written V just to make sure that it is a volume of solution in some books you may find this written V sol it makes a it means the same thing so if we replace the value of N divided by I forget this formula W by M that is mass by molar mass then by uh, putting the values and rearranging we find that n equal to wb by nb into v in the denominator and if v is expressed by a smaller unit cc or ml that needs to be converted to liter by dividing by 1000 as you can see here and then if we rearrange everything it, the 1000 goes in the numerator and the unit becomes mole per liter there were two more formulae for molarity As you can see in your note, another formula for molarity is 10xd by mb, where x stands for mass percentage of solute, d is the density of solution in gram per milliliter or sorry gram per milliliter or gram per cc, and mb is the molar mass of the solute. This formula we use when the uh, mass of the solute is given in terms of percentage and density of the solution is given. There is another formula for molarity and that is m1v1 equals m2v2. 
you might have noticed that I gave you a numerical depending on this formula. This formula of m1 v1 equals m2 v2 is done, is used when you know the concentration of one of the solutions. If you are adding some water or any other solvent to it to dilute it further, then v1 is the amount taken for the known solution and v2 is the volume of the final solution. Then what will be the concentration of the final solution? If we have such situation, then we use the formula m1 v1 equals m2 v2. <clears throat> as molarity is dependent on volume as you can see here molarity is dependent on volume and volume is dependent on temperature so molarity is dependent on temperature since molarity and volume they are inversely proportional and volume and temperature they are directly proportional so molarity becomes inversely proportional to temperature I think this question was there in your promotion examination question paper also then comes molality and molality is represented by the symbol small m. It is the number of moles of solute in 1 kg of solvent. So in what way it is different from molality? In uh, molarity sorry in molarity you may notice it is 1 liter of solution and here it is 1 kg of solvent. So you need to be very very careful in learning the definition of molality and molarity. So the formula for <coughs> final formula for molality we get Wb by Mb into Wa. If Wa is taken in grams then it has to be converted to kg by dividing by 1000. So the 1000 goes to the numerator and the unit will be mole per kg. Unit of molality will be mole per kg. Now since mass and molar mass they are independent of temperature hence molality is independent of temperature. So these are a few concentration terms which you needed to know and we, I have given you some numericals to work out. This is a solved example from your textbook. Calculate the mole fraction of ethylene glycol. The formula of ethylene glycol is given C2H6O2 in a solution containing 20% ethylene glycol by mass. This particular problem I have given you in class 11 also and again I am giving you in class 12. It is a textbook question. It is a solved example. Uh, so you have to do it again and I hope you understood how it was done. Okay, All these problems which I have given you these are all from class 12 textbook and these are all done in class 11. If you have any doubts you may always ask.